Every bride wants to preserve the memories of her wedding dress. Finding the right person to clean and preserve your dress is the first step toward ensuring that the dress will stay in perfect condition. I just wish that I had known Wayne Edelman when I got married. He's the owner of Maurice Garment Care of New York City. His family has been in the dry cleaning business for nearly 50 years, specializing in combining old world craftsmanship and state of the art technology to make sure that every garment is as beautiful as it can be. I think you really need to find a reputable cleaner. It's not just a cleaner that put a little cheesy plastic sign in his window that says wedding gown specialist. Starting with a label may seem like a good idea, but it's not enough, according to Wayne. Federal law requires that a manufacturer fix a care label to each and every garment that they sell. The law requires that the label be there, but it doesn't require that the label be correct. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. When so was the wedding? Your cleaner should carefully go over every inch of your dress with you as soon as possible after the wedding, or send your dress with someone else so that it gets attention immediately. I like to explain the process, talk about what I'm going to do to it, whether or not we're going to wet clean it, dry clean it, point out stains, and really make the customer aware of what I can and what I can't do. If I feel that something is not going to be 100%, we'll let them know at that time. Stains fall into, for the most part, two categories. There's dry side stains and there's wet side stains. And they should come out the way they go in. Dry side stains would be paint, oil, grease, lipstick. Those come out with solvents in dry cleaning as opposed to wet side stains, which might be ginger ale, wine, champagne, cake icing, sugary type stains, grass stains from an outdoor wedding. Those come out using water as the medium. The dry cleaning solvent perchloroethylene or perk will not remove sugar stains like icing or white wine. Left untreated these can become permanent. Sugar stains will caramelize and the best explanation for that is if you bite into an apple and sit it down on the table you begin to see the sugary areas turning brown and the same thing happens to a sugary type stain on a garment. Makeup stains are also quite prevalent and not just along the neckline. We do see a lot of makeup and we see a lot of body makeup, as a matter of fact, which covers the bodices on the gowns. If you do spill something on your dress, be careful how you treat it. You can blot it, don't rub it. I wouldn't use club soda. Uh, that's nothing more than water with bubbles in it. And it does nothing for lifting stains out. If anything, it makes the stain removal more difficult by spreading the stain out or potentially setting it. Just as there are different ways of treating stains, there are different ways of treating elaborately beaded gowns, a cleaner's biggest headache. The perchloroethylene will melt some beads, and it starts by taking the coating off, they become tacky, and then they begin to break down. Part of the problem is, A, they disappear, and B, they redeposit some of the tackiness back onto other portions of the gown. Marie's Cleaners has an unusual way of testing beading. This is a great test. We use a black light. And we found that when they were beating the gowns, the manufacturers don't necessarily use the same vendor throughout the whole gown. So if we would test one area, it might test fine, and then we would go ahead and clean the gown, and we would see that the beading melted in certain areas. This gives us a much better overview of the garment. As you can see here, these beads glow prominently. And although this says dry clean only, we would be really wary about cleaning this gown in regular method, and we choose to use a petroleum method for it. Proper cleaning is half the secret to keeping your gown pristine. The other half is proper preservation. Maurice uses only acid-free products. Regular paper products are highly acidic and emit fumes, which will eventually yellow the gown. We pack the gown in an acid-free box. Inside, we have a layer of unbleached cotton muslin. The gown is placed on an acid-free bus form. Every time we fold the gown, we buffer it with a layer of acid-free tissue paper. The box is then closed, it is not sealed, and then it's placed in an unbleached cotton muslin bag. And that bag acts as a filter, allowing the air to circulate through it while trapping dust and pollutants and particulate matter. A sealed box would not allow moisture to evaporate. If the relative humidity is 60 or 80 percent, you have moisture in that garment that you're sealing into a box, and the potential at that point is to create mold and mildew. The final step is where to store it. It should not be stored in an attic. It should not be stored in the basement. You want to keep the temperature kind of even 
all year round. Very similar to what exists in a museum. I mean, this is your treasured piece.